Jadevian Clowney is still a free agent. Everson Griffin is still a free agent. Jamal Adams is on the trade block. And yet, I hear a report today that says the Seattle Seahawks are having internal discussions about who? Not Jadevian Clowney, not Everson Griffin, not Jamal Adams, but Antonio Brown? Oh my goodness. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, John Schneider. You gotta be kidding me. <sighs> Guys, if you guys haven't heard, earlier today there was a report that said the Seattle Seahawks and the Baltimore Ravens have had internal discussions about the signing of Antonio Brown. What does that mean? No one really knows, so I can't get too mad. I mean, they could have been super casual, you know, they could have said a couple words over coffee, or at the same time, they, you know, easily could have had a very serious talk, and they're on the verge of signing Antonio Brown. No one really knows because they're internal discussions, and unless you're in that conversation, you really do not know what's happening. But yeah, guys, Antonio Brown is not a need, and I understand there's been a lot of 12s I've talked to that said, dude, but Antonio Brown would be a game changer, but there's just too many question marks. First and foremost, guys, Antonio Brown's going to miss half the season at least because the accusations he had last year. So he's not even going to be playing the first part of the year. And I understand a lot of people are like, well, we'll need him for the playoffs. That's really what matters. But you don't understand. This guy hasn't played for a year. Not only that, but we're going to throw him in a situation late in the season when he did have none of the beginning of the season to get warmed up and get back into his prime shape and game speed, but we're just going to throw him in into the playoffs or the second half of the season, and all of a sudden, he'll be the best wide receiver in the game again. What? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, if he didn't have the suspension on his name, I 100% agree we should sign him because he's going to have weeks 1 through 8, maybe weeks 1 through 10 to really, you know, get picked up to the speed and, and get back into game speed and really, you know, get his routes right and his, and his speed right, get back into shape. But that's not the case. He's going to be facing a suspension that lasts at least the first part of the season. Let's say he comes back in the second half of the season. By the time he's really going to be back to speed, is it's going to take him a few games. And people are saying, well, he's working out this and that yes guys but there's ring rust quote-unquote ring rust it, it is it exists when you're not in the game for a while and you all of a sudden want to jump back in and face the best in the game is you're not going to come back and perform your best he's going to have to get used to the speed of football and, and that's one big concern i have another big concern is we don't really know what antonio brown's going to do to our locker room i don't want to have a locker room that's going to be full of drama and this and that and honestly Antonio Brown will probably add fuel to the fire we don't have any drama to our locker room right now and I want to keep it that way I love the chemistry on our team and I, I don't want to see Antonio Brown coming in and ruin all that and our big reason is guys we don't really need another wide receiver DK Metcalf is developing right now Tyler Lockett is our number one guy Philip Dorsett's a speedster he's going to be fighting for snaps Demos fighting for a spot on this team John Arsua is fighting for snaps we've got all these players that are really trying to fight hard to get a spot on this team and at the end of the day, and signing Antonio Brown, is it, it doesn't really help us. It's just like another spot on our roster that, you know, is going to be wasted. Last reason I also want to discuss this is Josh Gordon is about to be reinstated. Maybe. Alden Smith got reinstated, so I'm assuming Josh Gordon gets reinstated. And if he gets reinstated, I'd rather get Josh Gordon. And that I would rather have him as our third wide receiver and, and roll with that. I don't want to roll the dice and try and spin for Antonio Brown right now. It doesn't make any sense. Especially with all the other free agents we have. Jadavion Clowney's still available on the free market. And we're not even, it seems like we're not even making an attempt to sign him. We haven't talked to him for months. So, yeah, I'm not really happy with this whole Antonio Brown stuff. It seems like we're really reaching for stars at this point. And, and, the, and our big thing is we're reaching for stars, but we're cheap. We don't want to pay the stars. That's exactly our mentality. Well, if we're going to get stars, we're going to have to pay for them. Same thing with Jadavion Clowney. Same thing with Jamal Adams. Same thing with everyone. We can't be cheap, and I understand next year we're going to have a lot of players that are going to be walking because we're not going to have all the money to be signing a lot of our big players, but that's how the NFL works. You can't sign everyone. We faced this situation before, and guess what? We had to trade, for, uh, we had to trade Frank Clark. Did it work out in our favor? Not at the moment, but, you know, we, we still know LJ Collier is still developing, but still, I mean... <sighs> I just don't, I, I, I really don't understand this Antonio Brown thing. I, I just don't. I'm not too mad right now because internal discussions don't mean anything yet. But 
I'm also really concerned about how much money it would take to get Antonio Brown. Yes, it, he could cost us $2 million just because the market for him isn't very high. And that's extremely affordable. But at the same time, he could be upwards to over a little bit over $5 million, which it doesn't sound like that much. But that's $5 million I'd rather be put towards Jadevian Clowney, a guy who's actually going to come in and not cause drama in the locker room and gonna and is going to produce. We don't even know if Antonio Brown's going to be game ready. I mean, he's not getting any younger at this point. And he's going to stop the develop. I mean, people, I've heard this saying too. He's like, well, he'll help a DK develop. Dog, DK is fine. He's going to develop just fine. He just needs to get snaps and he's got to get a lot of targets next year. And he will develop just fine. You don't have to worry about that. Signing Antonio Brown isn't going to really do anything except for eat at his snaps. So that's my opinion, guys. I just want to jump on here real quick because I wasn't really happy about seeing about Port. It's cool, like, yeah, we've had internal discussions about him. Do we really know what that means? Like I said, no, we don't know what that means. Does this mean we're going to sign him? No. And it makes a lot more sense for Baltimore to sign him. They have every position covered except for number. Uh, their number one issue is wide receiver. And if you're going to compete with a team like Kansas City who has an explosive offense, you're going to need an explosive player. And that could be Antonio Brown. Roll the dice. You've rolled it this whole time anyway. You draft Lamar Jackson. He's become one of the best players in the league. You get Clays Campbell. You get this guy, this guy, this guy. You sign Earl Thomas. I mean, you've been hit left and right, so why not just take another chance to sign Antonio Brown if you're Baltimore? That's my opinion, and I think it makes a lot more sense for this for them to sign Antonio Brown, especially with Marquise Brown, his cousin, playing there. I mean, it just sets up perfectly for Baltimore to sign him. The only thing we have really linked to him was what? He trained with Geno Smith? What does that really mean? I mean, players sign, I mean, train with other players all the time from different teams. So I don't really think that means too much at this point, and I don't really know what's going to happen. But you guys have to remember, there's been Seahawks and Antonio Brown have been linked to each other since last year, and nothing has really happened. So that's my opinion, guys. If we sign Antonio Brown, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be mad. It, it depends how much money we pay for him. If he's cheap, I'll be like, we'll wait and see. I'm not gonna be mad or sad or happy. Nothing yet. I just don't think it's a good idea right now. But until anything happens, I'm not gonna hate on it. So. I just want to get that out. I'm just a little bit worried because Jadavion Clowney isn't going to be available for much longer. And Jamal Adams is obviously trying to go to Dallas or somewhere else. We got to make a move on someone before it's too late. We can't sit around and hope to someone just fall on our lap. We got to make phone calls. We got to, you know, make moves right now. And if not, we're going to be left in the dust and we're going to have another second round exit. And we're going to be sitting down in the offseason wondering why we lost another game. Is it the coaching staff? Is it because we're not running the ball? I mean, uh, passing the ball enough? Or is it because of injuries? I'm tired of that. I'm trying to win now. I don't want any more excuses. We got to win now. And I think signing a like Jadavion Clowney or trading for Jamal Adams will definitely take us over the hump. That's my opinion. Give me uh, give me your opinion, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It does really uh, help me a lot. And yeah, guys, both 300 subscribers. We're at like 256, I think. So thank you guys very much. I hope you did enjoy this video. Go Hawks, and I'll see you guys soon.